Ja. Hey guys, how y'all doing? This is Brian, Cliffside Outfitters. Uh, thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, and, and if we hadn't told you lately, we want to let you know that we certainly do appreciate uh, you watching our videos. Uh, when we see the, the likes and subscribes and comments, uh, it it's, it's really is an inspiration to us and it encourages us, you know, when we're putting these videos together. Uh, so we want to let you know that we sure do appreciate it. Uh, today in the video, uh, we're going to do uh, the weather, it's foul weather. Uh, I got a lot of lightning and thunderstorms coming through. And I've had a couple requests uh, from some viewers and some uh, uh, friends that uh, they asked me just exactly what kind of technique, uh, what kind of rig are we using when we're fishing for crappie and there's several different rigs that we use uh, but uh, so I'm going to take you through a few of the ones that uh, are most common the ones that we use day in and day out to catch crappie so check out what we're doing right here all right guys I've got you drawn in here where you can see uh, what I'm doing this uh, I know this hard to see but that little hook right there is a number six Aberdeen crappy hook. Uh, that's a real good hook. I like the gold ones better than I do uh, the dark colored hooks, uh, but for uh, viewing purposes, I'm gonna show you on this white background, uh, that little uh, bronze hook is what we usually use. It's a number six Aberdeen hook. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this hook because you'll be able to see that a whole lot better. So let's take this and put it away. I've also got some fishing line here. This is just regular old monofilament fishing line. And uh, normally, what I use is four pound test. That's about the biggest line that I ever use when I'm crappy fishing. Uh, every once in a while, if I'm in real heavy brush, uh, I'll use six pound test uh, or maybe eight pound test low vis green. But the thing about it is, crappy are not really that line shy, uh, so you can get by with a with a lot of uh, different size lines. Uh, the high vis gold, uh, you can get by with all that when you fish for crappy. But I think a lot of things in fishing has to do with confidence. So if you have confidence in something, uh, that's going to make you catch more fish, just right off the bat. So four pound test, uh, green, low vis green lines, what I typically use. This, uh, however, is a little bit bigger line, uh, and uh, uh, that's for viewing purposes. But <clears throat> there's... Uh, Basically, one rig that is sort of a go-to rig for us when we know what the fish are doing. Um, it, it's it works in all situations as far as crab fishing and live bait, uh, but it, it's not as good a search rig as some of the ones I'm going to show you later on in the video. Uh, but take your uh, number six Aberdeen hook and uh, take your uh, standing line, the main line. Pass the the uh, excuse me. Pass the line uh, through the eye of the hook, and you can either twist the hook or you can wrap the tag in around the main line. But I'm gonna go around it about six times. This is called the improved clinch knot. I'm gonna pass it back through that loop, 
and then through the loop I created. And as with any knot, you want to, you want, excuse me, you want to wet that before you cinch it down. Pull that down tight, and then take your, your scissors or your clippers, whatever you have, and clip that off. <clears throat> okay, so we got our we got our hook on our main line. I want to come 12 to 14 inches above that, and you can vary that and and try uh, different ways. Uh, to see what works best for you, but I find that 12 14 inches is, is the best for me uh, But <clears throat> right here. I've got some split shot now. This is a this is a number four And I use a lot of number fours use a lot of number fives uh, The shallower I get uh, the smaller split shot I'll use uh, But for demonstration purposes let's take this number four. This is what I would use uh, in water up to about 20 feet deep uh, and you put that 12 to 14 inches on your standing line take you some uh, hemostats or pliers and uh, peach them on there and uh, that's pretty much it put your mint on drop it down to your known depth uh, I'll drop that down if I've got a brush pile that tops out at 8 feet I'll drop that down to where this is about six feet and that minnow's dancing right over top of that brush and uh, when the crappie are active and they're feeding this is a real good uh, uh, technique to use uh, it's inexpensive to tie it's not going to cost you a whole lot of money if you lose this rig so that's uh, our go-to right there just right off the bat ours our go-to rig uh, for tight line crappie fishing all right guys so our first rig is uh really good if we're if we've already found the fish we've already uh, uh we know that they're uh, at a certain depth on a brush pile we're not going to be moving around a whole lot uh the next rig we're going to tie is uh it's not well let's just say this it's a a more of a searching rig. We don't know exactly where the crap is at. Uh, we know that uh, we might uh, find them in a certain area, but we don't. We don't have them pinpointed. We don't know exactly where they're at. So we're going to do a little more searching. Uh, this rig is. Uh, we've got a jig on the bottom, and then up above the jig, we're going to uh, tie a that number six. Uh, or it's used number four, but the minnow hook is going to be above the jig, and uh, uh, we're going to we're going to be moving around a little more with this rig. Uh, so it's sort of like we're we're trolling with the jig, but we've got our minnow up there, uh, and we're not going to be moving real fast. So let me show you how we tie this one up. Uh, let's get our standing line, our main line, and uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up about 24 inches. Uh, more or less, uh, you can you can adapt this uh, to whatever your situation is. But uh, we're going to take our uh, our uh, minnow hook and uh, we're going to tie it on about 24 inches up the standing line with a Palmer knot. Uh, double your line uh, and leave you like I said 24 inches of tag and take and go through the hook eye just like that now if your hook eye is uh, too small for you to double the line and take it through you can pass it through and then pass it back through and create the same loop uh, but we're going to take and uh, once we get it doubled and pass through we're going to tie a square knot like you're beginning to tie your shoe and you're going to end up with this right here uh, and then you're going to take this loop reach through it and grab the hook pull it through the loop now we want to wet this so that it'll cinch down and we've got our uh, palmer knot and we've got a uh, you could make this you can make it 10 foot if you want to uh, 24 inches 12 inches whatever you like uh, but we're going to separate the two baits by the distance of whatever tag you've left. So let's take and uh, 
and tie our jig on the bottom. Uh, my favorite knot for tying a jig uh, to whatever, uh, I like a loop knot because of the freedom of movement. I think it gives the jig a little more action. But we're going to pass the line through the eye of the jig and we're going to hold it double. We're going to take, watch me now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to create a loop with that doubled line and then I'm going to pass my jig through the loop. One, two, three times. Now, <clears throat> once I get it passed through three times, I've got my double loop. I'm going to take that loop and I'm going to hook it on uh, the eye of the jig to help control it. I'm going to put my finger right here on the eye and I'm going to start cinching it down. Once it gets close, I'm going to lubricate it, uh, but I'm going to pull it on down to it's about a half inch or so, a quarter inch on a small crappy jig, and then I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to cinch it down. And that gives me a loop knot. So let's get, uh, let's get our scissors and, and trim our tag in. Got our tag end trimmed off. We got a we got a loop knot. Our old jig, he's just as free, and it can move. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to have this minna hooked to the standing line on this hook right here. And as that minna moves, it's going to move the jig. So that minna, not only is he being attractive himself, he's uh, actually working the jig for me. And I'm going to pull this uh, through the water column. We've got bait at two different depths so that helps us that's a little more of a search bait that's another one we use when we're moving around and we're searching for fish so uh, that's a that's a good good setup right there we use that a whole lot now that last rig that we used that's real good that's a a typical rig for a uh, uh, spider rig we're we're moving around more uh, we got our jig that's holding the bait stationary. Uh, any bite, everything's tight. So any bite, uh, the rod as you move will will probably set the hook. So uh, now let's move to a a, a faster uh, technique. We're going to drop out the minna. Uh, we're going to go uh, to a tandem. Uh, jig rig and this is what I use when I sometimes I use a jig uh, sometimes I use a uh, a jig with a with a, uh, a blade on it uh, a spinner this is more of a, a trolling technique and we use this a lot when when it gets really hot and the fish are completely suspended they're scattered all over the place uh, we're gonna get on the flats and we're gonna we're gonna tie up this rig and we're gonna troll it. This is a long line trolling technique. We're gonna throw out, we're gonna drop back, uh, and we'll use a uh, the jig heads are gonna be based on whatever depth that you want to pull. Uh, but this is actually a true trolling uh, setup that we use. Uh, so let me show you how to tie it up. So first, we want to uh, we want to tie a loop. We're going to use the same idea. We're going to have the long tag end, uh, but we're going to take and tie. We're going to slip our jig on the tag end, and uh, instead of tying a palmer knot, we're going to tie uh, our loop knot up here uh, high on the top jig. So again, we're going to take our loop. We're going to loop it around. One, two, three. Now, <clears throat> we do not want this loop uh, to be close to the jig head. So we're going to let it ride up. Actually, we're going we're gonna to tease it up this way. And we're going to pull it down uh, to where we have a dropper that's sort of a dropper loop so you can see that you've got you've got your standing line and then you're gonna have this jig head and it's gonna be fluttering 
uh, back here uh, behind uh, the main line and then we're going to take our heavier jig uh, and the, both these jigs are the same size but but y'all understand what I'm talking about we're going to take our heavier jig and we're going to put it on the bottom and like I said I like to keep this simple we're going to use the same knot we're going to do the same loop and uh, we're going to pass it through here three times. And this one here, we're going to keep it a little closer because we don't need to, we don't need the long loop. So we're going to pull that down, then we're going to tease it off the top of that jig. We're going to pull that down. Let's see if we can get this separated and get our, get our tag in cut off. But what that's going to do, that's going to give us a, a jig down on the bottom, and it's free. We got a loop knot on it. It's free. You can tip that in if you want to. Uh, and then on up the line, we're going to have a standing loop, and we're going to have our other jig, and uh, both these are going to be trailing back uh, behind the boat. We're going to be trolling at a little, little higher speed. We're going to be pulling these, uh, but that's a real good rig for for doing that so there we go on that I'm going to show you one more time for casting a jig um, I'm just out shooting docks uh, casting on the bank casting on brush uh, the cast and retrieve let me show you one more time this is the knot that I use uh, and it's a good knot uh, but let's take it let's take it and pass it through loop around your fingers pass your jig three times we're going to take and and put a finger on top of that uh, hook eye to where we can tease that loop down toward the hook eye just like that. We'll lift it off the hook eye and go ahead and cinch it on down. Pull both lines and get it cinched down. But that's our uh, that's our standard loop knot that we use. And what that does, like I said, that gives you that gives your jig more freedom uh, to move around. And, and uh, if, I think you'll catch a few more fish and get a few more bites uh, with a loop knot uh, versus uh, tied directly to the hook eye tying tight to the hook eye where your jig can't move. Alright, now for the last rig I'm going to show you today, uh, we've, uh, we've tied a rig. Uh, the first rig that we showed you was all about efficiency. You hook, you split shot, you drop it down there, you're jerking the fish out. Second rig is so we can move around a little more uh, and maybe try to find some fish. Uh, the third rig was an extreme uh, moving around rig. I mean, it's a, it's a rig to where we're covering uh, large expanses of water, uh, which is a tandem trolling rig, and we're going to move that. You know, we're, we're way beyond uh, tight lining or spider rig, and we're actually trolling. And the last one I'm going to show you is a rig uh, that that we use from time to time if you have uh, fish that are stacked up in a brush pile uh, and and say we're, you're, you're getting tangled up a lot your little minna is going down there and he's tangling you up uh, and, and you're losing a lot of equipment uh, let me show you the dropper rig we use a dropper rig and uh, you can use several different weights uh, styles uh, to tie the dropper rig but to start with we're going to do the same uh, deal with the hook essentially we're going to take and tie a dropper loop we're going to take and and make a loop double our line just like that and then we're going to take the line and we're going to one, one side or the other you can pick either side but we're going to pass it through the loop that we've created and we want to do that about four times then we want to hold on to uh, 
uh, the portion that we've passed through, grab the, the standing line and the tag end, and we're going to pull this down. We're going to cinch it down. We'll lubricate that knot and cinch that down. We've made a dropper loop. Okay? Then, just like we're going to tie a polymer knot, we take and, and double our loop. Okay? And uh, always when you're when you're passing uh, a loop uh, uh, through a hook eye, whether you're doing a snail knot or you're doing a polymer knot where your hook's tied directly uh, to your standing line, always go in from uh, the hook point side and that'll that'll turn your hook upward. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to pull that loop through and we're going to just pass it over the the bend of the hook, just like that, uh, and, and work that down, and then we'll just pull that, and that attaches your hook, that attaches your hook to, uh, to your line, uh, and you got that on the loop. Now, <clears throat> that's going to give that uh, hook and that minnow some freedom. He's going to be able to, to work around, just like our first rig. Uh, but he's not going to be on the bottom. He's going to be up on the top. Then uh, you come down here on your tag end, 24 inches or, or whatever. Uh, come down here on your tag end and tie your sinker. Now you can use uh, a sinker like this. It's got a hook eye on it. You could actually even tie a uh, egg sinker. Just tie it on there. Because we're not concerned with this knot. Uh, we're just going to tie just whatever kind of knot, granny knot, square knot, anything, because that don't have to have no strength to it. Because the idea is, if you actually get hung up, you prefer that this knot uh, would pull out or break uh, before you before you loop. That way, that'll save you some hooks. If you're in in heavy brush, so you can take this, you can drop this down until you feel the brush. And once you fill the brush with this right here, then you know, well, I'm right there at the brush. Well, then your hook is right above it, and that minnow's dancing around, and he's moving that hook around, uh, and uh, he's going to attract your fish up to the up to the hook, and you keep your hook out of the brush. So that's a real good technique for heavy brush. Uh, all right, guys. Well, there you have it. That's uh, that's pretty much the four. Uh, what we would call standard techniques uh, that me and the guys use when we go out uh, crappy fishing, especially when we're using minnows or when we're trolling, uh, that's basically the four the four rigs that we use, and we try to adapt uh, our rig to the, the the situation, how the fish are set up, and how they're they're holding on the brush, or whether they're suspended, or whatever they're relating to. Uh, one of those techniques uh, can usually get the bait where it needs to be uh, to where we can get a bite. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you picked up something that, uh, that will help you in the future uh, to catch more fish. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Uh, this is Brian with Cliffside Outfitters. Y'all have a good day.